Alright, what's up everybody and welcome back to Survivor Sax. And I know you are anxiously awaiting this video to find out why I would actually work on cruise ships for 21 years if it really was as bad as I said it was, which it was. But it wasn't always that bad. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the top five reasons not just why I stayed there for as long as I did, but why I felt like being a musician on a cruise ship was the greatest job on the planet. Man, back in the day, you're going to hear a whole lot of back in the day. I was watching The Sopranos and Tony Soprano was telling Paulie, you guys see that episode where he's like, hey, the lowest form of conversation is remember when. But back in the day, working on cruise ships was just absolutely amazing. Now, I'm going to save why I actually stayed out there for as long as I did for the very end, but here we go. Let's get to it. So coming in at number five is quite obviously traveling. You get to travel and see the world and you get paid to do so. Some of these places we weren't allowed to take pictures. Like if you go to Vatican City, if you go to the Sistine Chapel, you actually have to cover up bare skin and you're not allowed to take pictures while you're in there. I mean, this is, I'm in my 20s. I'm young. I'm seeing the world. I'm doing all of that. I've showed you pictures. I'll run a little slide reel for you so you can see some of the stuff or at least some of the places that I've been. There's so much that I can't show you <laughs> because it's, you know, YouTube's platform, whatever. But, I mean, you get the picture. I've been to Brazil during Carnival, and you know how they do parades there. You know, at any rate, traveling, traveling, traveling. I've been to Australia, New Zealand, travel the world. Get out there. Learn about other cultures. Don't just watch what you see on TV. You ain't learning nothing. You only learning what they want you to learn so you can behave how they want you to behave. But when you work, live together with people that have nothing in common with you, it gives you a much broader perspective on what Earth is really about. Go out and see the world. Do it. Get it. Go get it. Some of these places they don't even go to anymore. I know they stopped going to see the pyramids. I don't know what kind of relationship we have with China right now to go see the Great Wall of China, but these are like the biggest things in the world. These are the seven wonders of the world. So I knew at that time, hey, man, go out there and get it. I was going to go see the towers in Kuala Lumpur. Didn't get a chance to see that, but I did used to sail out of New York to the Twin Towers. We used to take pictures next to it and everything, and we'd sail by the Statue of Liberty. So traveling and seeing the world. Number five. All right, let's move on to number four. So coming in at number four, ladies and gentlemen, is the money. And I'm going to tell you right now, the money that you will make on cruise ships as a saxophonist in the orchestra is absolutely awful. It's much, much worse now than what it was when I started back in 1998. They still have the same starting salary of $1,800 now than what they did back then. I just got an offer after making that hateful video. I got an offer to go work out on cruise ships. It was less than what I was making when I quit. But you go get your inflation calculator. You can Google it. Google $1,800, 1998, and then put in 2023. It should be around $3,600. So if I was going to make the same amount of money, if that money was going to have the same value, they'd have to start me at $3,600. There you go. But that is not what I'm talking about when I say that number four is the money. I'm talking about the money you do not have to spend when you get on a cruise ship. The only thing you really need to buy, at least as a musician going out there, is soap or soaps, as I should say. That's shampoo, hair soap, body soap, body wash, bar soap, laundry soap, toothpaste, Teeth soap, this kind of stuff. Maybe get you some deodorant. Do us all a favor and get some deodorant. <laughs> but that's it. All your food is covered. It's not free. The way I see free is, well, we pay for it with the money they don't give us. That money you never see on your check, that, that all goes toward that. I'm going to tell you right now, 
if you decide to do it, you're going to feel how much money you didn't make when you're on your break from ships because you're going to have to pay. You're going to owe. But at least while you're there, you can legit save a lot of money. All right, let's get to number three. Coming in at number three is ship life. Your ship life experience is going to be unlike anything you've ever experienced in your life because this is one of the only times you will actually live at your job. You're going to live at your job. So you are always at work. Even when you get off the ship and go off in port, guess see you, you are still at work. You're still at work. When you are asleep, you are still at work because if there's an emergency or something, you better be on it. You better be on your game. But I'm telling you right now, man, back in the day, ship life was absolutely amazing for a saxophonist in the orchestra. Now, an example that I can tell you is I was on a ship that was going to South America for the first time. It's one of the best contracts I ever had in my life. And lucky for us, the cruise line screwed up all the booking. So we had less than half the capacity of guests on the ship for about a month. Which means that our workload was massively cut. Not even like cut in half. I mean, cut by like 80%. We did one show at like 10 o'clock. And I'm telling you for 30 days straight on that ship, the crew bar was wall to wall jam packed with everybody knowing that this ain't going to last forever. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, if it wasn't already crazy enough that we were in South America for the first time. Now, when you get back on the ship, the party just keeps continuing. It's really a completely different kind of lifestyle all together. So ship life can be truly, truly amazing and is most definitely one of the things that you looked forward to before you were going to go out because you knew it was never going to be boring. Something was always going to be going on. OK, let's get to number two. Now, when I quit cruise ships in 2019, I started making this video and the other one talking about the things that I hate about cruise ships. And I've had to delete this thing probably about 10 times because quite simply, it was just way too dirty. <laughs> I was like, Damn, I can't put this on YouTube. I can't. No, no. So I'm going to just keep it simple when I get to number two. And number two is very, very closely related to number one. Now, whenever I tell people that I worked on cruise ships for 21 years, they are in complete and total amazement. Women, when they hear me say that, go into fantasy mode about how beautiful Italy is and Spain and Greece and South America and Canada and Australia, New Zealand, all these places that a lot of older women, they grew up watching The Price is Right. And it was always like these exotic trips that you could win and go to all these places. I remember being a little kid and I was like, I want to go way over there. Better bring out that new car. Spin that wheel. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but whenever I say this to dudes, they all say the same thing. They're like, man, I bet you saw some pretty women in all those countries you've been to. And you know what? I have. I have most definitely seen a lot of beautiful women from all over the world. And I'm going to be straight up honest with you. <laughs> That was a big reason why I stayed for as long as I did. Straight up, for real. You get used to that lifestyle where you get on a ship and you just understand how many different cultures that are there and you start to develop ways of communicating with people that don't come from your own country. A lot of people, just like in high school, just like in college, just like in elementary school, they all get into their little cliques. But being a guy in the orchestra, we were always kind of mixed up. If there's a guy in the band that speaks French, then he can get me in with the French people. And now when I see the French people hanging out, they're like, hey, buddy, come on over, man. And now I'm in with them and then they can see me somewhere with a different group of people. And now everybody's intermingling and everybody's getting to know each other 
And now, when we go to France, we know all the cool places to go to. When we go to Italy, we know the best places to get food in Italy. I mean, come on. Anyway, my whole point was uh, beautiful women around the world, number two. Uh, Yeah, so let's get to number one. But first, let's take a break. If you like this kind of content, ladies and gentlemen, and you want to support the channel, you can buy me a piece of cake. It's like a Kickstarter Patreon type of program, but you just buy me a piece of cake and that helps to go a long way with helping the channel grow. I also have an affiliate link with Woodwind Brasswind. If you are looking to get a new saxophone or some new music products, you can use my link and I get a small commission from that. They are always running specials. I think right now they're running some fantastic back to school specials. You can get the jump on that. Also, if you're looking to get a tenor saxophone, my tenor saxophone that I've been playing in all these videos for the last few years, that thing is up for sale. I'm looking to get something new, but I need to move that one first. And there's like well over $2,000 worth of accessories that I am selling along with that. I will post the link in the description box below. I also have an affiliate link with Amazon. So there's always some kind of cool saxophone stuff that's there. I'll also post a link for that stuff. I also have my Altissimo books for alto and tenor. I have my All Things Diminished book for all instruments. And I have my most popular, my saxophone sound development book that is also available for purchase. Those books are available as a digital purchase only. Okay, let's get to it. The number one thing that I thought made working on cruise ships so cool was really just flat out all the people that you meet. Now, I've worked as a musician for a long time, but working on a cruise ship and you get to meet so many people from around the planet, it really does help develop you as a more well-rounded human being. Big time. It's one thing to know somebody. But when you know somebody, you work with that person and you live with that person. My first roommate was not 40 years old when I was 24. He was 40 years older than me. So I was 24 and my first roommate was 64 years old. Allegedly, and I believe it because he never really talked about it. He was on the bus. The Buddy Rich bus. He was one of the guys just kind of keeping his mouth shut. Now, (laughs) that dude taught me more about jazz than what I had actually learned from the five years I was in college. And not to crap on my, my college degree or anything like that, but had I not gone to college, I wouldn't have been able to absorb what I got from having that guy sit right next to me. He's one of those old dudes that just knows every song, flute, clarinet, Piano, all that stuff, like one of those just older dudes, man. He'd be probably close to 90 by now. I hope he's doing all right. Lenny, you're my man. I love you. And my roommate that replaced him was another guy that was 64 years old, 40 years older than me. And between those two guys, that was really like the bread and butter, the backbone of what set me in the right direction to becoming a better musician. Because these guys are sitting here doing all the stuff I was trying to do when I was in college. You know what I'm saying? And those are just those two guys. I'm not even talking about the Australians and people from New Zealand. I got a chance to go to China, Japan, Thailand. We had overnights in Thailand. (laughs) Just the people that you meet are just fantastic. I got to teach the captain saxophone lessons. It was an Italian captain when I worked on Princess. He was very much a beginner saxophone player. And because he was the captain, the guy got calls all the time, all the time. And he paid me a hundred bucks, no matter what. We were supposed to have like a 45 minute lesson. I don't think we ever had a lesson that was more than 15 minutes because he'd always get a call. And he's like, ah, captain, I just want to play saxophone, man. (laughs) It is absolutely a hundred percent worth it if you understand the things I talked about in the other video. And in this video here, all this stuff that I'm talking about, whether it's good or bad, isn't really here to tell you what to do or to tell you how to live your life or to tell you how to be a professional musician. Nobody can tell you that except you. I want to give you the stuff that people just won't tell you on a platform like this. And they should. So that way, you know what to expect when you 
go out there. All right. So getting to this point, why would I do it for 21 years? Why did I put up with it for so long? Well, the easy answer is wasn't always that bad. But the simplest answer is quite simply, I never planned on quitting. I wound up moving to Florida so I wouldn't have to do it as much as I was doing it. I moved to Central Florida and I I don't know what the hell happened to Florida, but damn, I was like, I couldn't wait to move back to Ohio. I love Ohio so much more than Florida now. But when I moved there, like Central Florida in the wintertime is I don't know why you'd want to be anywhere else. But I never planned on quitting. I just wanted to do maybe one or two months every now and then if I get myself in a jam or if I just feel like going to some of these beautiful places around the world, I could just jump on a ship. But I got all my main stuff set up on land to where I don't have to do it as much. I was doing 10 and a half to 11 months of the year because I had to. And I'm going to tell you right now, as just something to leave you with. If you are a professional musician and I know you like playing gigs and all of that, and that's great. But this is very much like a game of Monopoly. You need to acquire valuable assets. And playing a bunch of gigs, working on cruise ships, you're not acquiring any valuable assets. In the game of Monopoly, it really doesn't matter how much money you have. It's how many properties you own and which ones you do and whether you can strategically acquire assets. And that's what I've been focusing on now. Now you can do that and work part-time on ships and then you're not worried about it. So that's what all this YouTube and focusing on creating CDs and all this and create music because a music product is a valuable asset. People listen to that stuff. I mean, we still listen to James Brown and Stevie Wonder. Vanilla Ice is still banking off of Ice Ice Baby. And he stole that song. (laughs) Okay, so before you leave, I do want to just throw this out. There's two people that I think that should just go out there no matter what. And number two is if you are between the ages of 21 and 26 years old, meaning you've graduated from college and you're still on your parents insurance. Take that time to see the world, man. Just get out there. Arm yourself with the knowledge that I've given you. And know what to expect. And then go out and see the world and meet all these beautiful people, man. You're going to meet a bunch of people you hate. You're going to meet a bunch of people that you will love and cherish for the rest of your life. It's worth it. It's worth it. And number one, retired military. Especially if you are a retired Navy musician. Man, you're going to get on a ship and you're going to be like, Really, Sorella Sacks? This is what you're complaining about? And then after a couple of contracts, you're going to be like, damn, I should have listened to that dude. (laughs) No, but legit, you will already understand a whole lot of what other people will struggle with, especially when it comes to just living in that lifestyle. That can be a lot for people that just don't know what that is. But as retired military, and I mean like collecting full benefits and pension and all that kind of stuff, man, I think something like that is ideal for you. But Ooh, I wish I could go into detail about number two, y'all. But that's all I got for you. So thanks for tuning in. See ya!